Yo. Yo. Test, test, check one. You good? Yeah, man. You good? I'm good, bro. Golden. In Canada. Yeah, me too, bro. <laughs> Back in the homeland. Yeah, man. How's the weather there? Sunny today. Yeah. Rare sight, dude. Not a cloud in the sky. Yeah. That. It's a rare sight. Yeah, lots of rain there, though, right? Lower mainland is a, it's a rainforest. Lower mainland. <laughs> yeah, that's what they call us. <laughs> Lower mainland. Yeah. Hello. Hey, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Okie dokie. Well, a couple things. Number one, hope everyone's doing great. Number two, most people are late, so I'm sure more people will show up. And number three, I'm going to do something a little different and better today, which is I'm going to be using a Google Doc to actually take notes. Do, 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 do. Okay. Y'all can see the screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, for those of you who are new to this particular call, this type of call, we're going to be doing these calls regularly, probably once a week going forward. And the purpose of these calls is to get you crystal clear on your offer so that you never have to come back to one of these calls. This call is hopefully a one-time visit. In fact, if you do come back to one of these calls, I will, it'll be kind of like coming back to fifth grade. So you have to redo fifth grade all over again. So if you have to redo fifth grade, you have to do it, whatever. But ideally, you move on to sixth grade and so on and so forth. I would actually love to hear stories about like true stories about people who like legitimately failed certain grades and had to redo the whole grade. Cause like in my school years, that was always like a threat, but like it never actually happened. There were some people like in grade 12 who were like, they're all excited to graduate. But then the teachers were like, if you don't pass this test, you're going to fail grade 12 and have to redo grade 12 and you won't be able to go to college with all your friends. And it was like, everyone was so scared. And then like this one, one of my friends, like she legitimately failed that test. And the teacher was like, oh, it's okay. Just go on. <laughs> so, but I would actually like to hear stories, true stories of someone who's actually failed. Does anyone know of us true story of someone who's failed a class in high school? And had to like, not, not a class, but like a grade and I had to redo the whole grade. Or was that just a threat as well? It's just a threat, right? Maybe in America they do things differently. Maybe in America they actually fail, fail students. Anywho, that's the purpose of this class. Get you in, get you out, on to the next one. Uh, second thing is the purpose of this call is to talk about your offer specifically. Now, what typically tends to happen on these calls is once we get you clear on your offer, the next logical question you'll have is like, okay, well now how do I sell it? And so then we sometimes go off on these side tangents of like how to actually sell your program. But that's not what this calls for. If you need help selling your program, you want to master the sales process side of things. So I just made this post right here. It's called your best sales process. Check that out. If you have a question about how to sell. And then if you want more info on how to sell the offer once we're clear on it. Inside of Contentpreneurs, we have a whole series of workshops called Increase Sales. And these all talk about specifics on how to actually sell your program, whether it's with the DMs, whether it's with YouTube, whether it's with storytelling, whether it's with webinars, whether it's on the phone or Facebook ads, uh, funnels, 
all the different ways of selling is in this series of workshops right here. Okay. So take a deep dive in there for more specifics. So having said that, the one question I want you all to be asking me today is this question right here. And the answer should be what? Yes. That should be the ideal answer. Cool. So having said that, uh, for those of you again who haven't been to this class before, I'll just quickly go through the top four things that are actually worth a thousand dollars online in the coaching space. And then once you have this list of four things, it's easy to stay focused as opposed to like running around thinking that you can offer a million different things. Because I think a big issue is people they they get overwhelmed and think I can offer anything, but the truth is you can't offer anything. There's only four things you could possibly offer in the coaching space. That's worth a thousand bucks. So I'll narrow down that menu for you right here. You can offer something in the relationship space. You can offer something in the beauty space. And I'll give you some examples in just a minute. You can offer something in the make money space. And you can offer something in the pop quiz. What's the last one? Pain. No cheating, Elena. Pain relief space. Yeah, ideally it's a uh, chronic, chronic pain. So these are the four categories in the online coaching space that are worth a thousand bucks or more. In fact, all of these four, you can charge much more than a thousand dollars for, but as beginners, I recommend just charging a thousand bucks to get the ball rolling. Now you might look at these and be like, I don't think I can help someone with any of these things. Like I'm, I suck at relationships. I'm ugly. I'm broke and I'm in chronic pain. If that's the case, we can talk about what to do, but I don't know if any of you are in that situation, but for each of these four, um, there are several examples and, and we'll just come up with like a couple examples for each right now, just to give you a brief idea. One of them in the relationship space, any ideas? How to optimize your dating profile? Good question. I mean, uh, yeah, good guess. I mean, these need to be end result based. End result based categories. So, optimizing a dating profile is a process. What's the end result of that? Finding your soulmate. On Tinder? I mean, yeah, people find their husbands on there. All right, finding your soulmate. How about just like get more dates? How about how, how about we meet in the middle there? Get more dates. And then if you happen to find your soulmate, cool. There, beautiful. Those are two right there. Any one of us right now could go out and make a program and sell this and it would crush. How to find your soulmate or how to get more dates on Tinder. Those two absolutely crush. Cool. How about beauty? Give me a couple examples. How to achieve an athletic body. Cool. And one more. You have to have good genetics. Your parents has to be handsome and pretty. Give me another end result here. Weight loss. Uh, sure. Yeah, that's a big one. Of course, that one sells every time. Okay. Gaining muscles. Yeah, that would be athletic body, we'll say. Gaining muscles. Okay, cool. Now, let's move on to the make money category. There's two pretty obvious ones here. Well, obvious to me, because that's what I do for a living. But what, did the, what would two be here? Make money, save money. Boom. Make more money, save more money. 
like reduce taxes, for example. And this one might be like make more sales. Cool. How about chronic pain relief? A couple examples here. Like teaching exercises that will strengthen your, your legs so you will not have problems with your knee pain. Eliminate knee pain. See, the first thing Casper did there, which is very common, is we talk about the process, like, oh, uh, certain exercises, blah, blah, blah. But that's process oriented. You have to train your mind to divide and separate process from end result. These are end result based topics here. We don't care about the process yet. That's a completely different workshop, completely different thought process. We purely want to think of the end result that I pay for. So I, yes, I have knee pain. I want to get rid of it. Boom. Same goes for eliminate wrist pain or eliminate back pain. You pick a, pick a body part and you eliminate it and it's, it's worth a lot of money. Mental pain or emotional pain. Yeah, that one's a bit harder. Good question. That one's a bit harder. It can be done, but those people are very hard typically to 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 sell and work with because emotionally, like they're just so in so much pain. You you could go that road. I really don't recommend it. Um, helping people with like major anxiety or major depression, very hard to work with those people. Because when you have major depression, it's hard to even get out of bed, let alone get on a sales call and give you a bunch of money, right? So unfortunately it's very hard to work with those people unless they happen to be like on a certain medication at the time of speaking with you and then they're, they're feeling good but in that case they're feeling good they don't need your services anymore because they're on the medication so those people are very very difficult to sell but yeah yeah i have a i have a friend who is in suicidal uh, condition and like talking with her is very hard like uh, she said like you don't like understand me and like it's very hard to to help her yeah yeah those those it's they're very hard to work with i recommend chronic physical pain or another chronic pain uh again i this is this one i'm about to say right now this is in between relationships and chronic pain you guys let me know where you would put this one but inability or difficulty with conceiving having a child where would you put that what's that i think that could be both because i think i know that weighs heavy on relationships as well like your relationship dynamic yeah i i, I arguments could be made for either one i probably go the relationship route as well um for sure because at the end of the day you're having a relationship with your partner and the child so Cool. There we go. So these are just a few examples for each category. But I wanted to start out with that, just letting you guys know that the menu for what you can actually charge people for is actually uh, not that massive. It's quite finite. So every single client we've worked with who's had success has in some way, shape or form chosen one of these. And you might think, oh, but like, what about all the people that you're working with who've had success making thousands of dollars in like the detox space or in like the yoga space, right? Then like the raw food and the vegan space. Why don't I see the word yoga or raw vegan or detox on here? Can someone answer that question? Because they're more so anomalies than, than anything else. Good guess, but no. Those are actually like our main clients. Most of our clients are in those spaces. Because they fall under them categories at some some point. Yeah. So it's like everything I just listed, veganism, yoga, detox, those are not end results. Those are processes uh, to help people achieve an end result. And that's that's the beautiful thing about this menu is like, although it's it's short, you can actually attach almost anything to it. So let's say you're super into meditation. Where does meditation fit in? Meditation could fit into all of these if you market it correctly. 
right? Like you could like sit and manif sit on the couch and manifest your soulmate using law of attraction techniques. Or you could sit on the couch and manifest more money. Or you could sit on the couch and manifest getting rid of knee pain through visualization techniques, right? So it's like almost any process or any technique or any method that you're passionate about, you can attach to one of these four. So having said all this, let's get into the Shark Tank style game here where you're all going to pitch me on your $1,000 theoretical offer. We'll start. I'll just pick names. We'll start with Dan. All right, so I've got to have a little think about it first. Um, so are you where you want to be in your body? Are you where you want to be? Am I where I want to be? I'm going to play devil's advocate. I'll say, I'm going to, devil's advocate. I'll, I'm going to, I'm going to play the perfect prospect for you. Okay. No, I'm not where I want to be. How much would you say you're willing to pay to get to where you want to be? Oof. That is a question we never want to ask. You don't want to ask that. You never want to ask that question. Uh, let's say I come over to your house and I see it's messy. Mm -hmm. Dude, this house is fucking messy, bro. I'm like, how much are you going to give me to fix it? In your mind, you're thinking as little as possible. Yeah. So you never, ever, ever want to ask what's your budget. All you want to ask is this question right here. And if I can say yes to it, you're good. So reword it as in, would you pay me a thousand pounds to help you achieve the body you want to get? Yeah, that's a, yeah, 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 exactly. So would you pay me a thousand pounds to, and then we'll say like, I know you said get the body you want to get, but um, you probably want to word that more powerfully. Yeah, no, no. Something like, would you pay me a thousand dollars to, achieve that achieve your dream body or achieve that like dream Hollywood dream physique dream, or something. Uh, yeah dream physique yeah. yeah boom sold so now as far as your method goes dude i don't even care what that is you could tell me i have to do handstands and eat hot cakes and i do it like it doesn't matter you can sell just me on that the end result rather than the process yeah just sell me on this first once i'm sold on this I'll happily do anything. Cool. Done. Congrats. Thank you. You've graduated. Never want to see you on this call again. <laughs> Any questions about this, dude? Um, no, I don't think so. No, I'm not. Thank you. All right, dude. Let's see a double bicep, bicep shot. Hey. <laughs> All right, sold. Sign me up. Cool. Thanks for playing. No, thank you. Let's go with, uh, let's get Belen to pick the next, uh, the next picture. Okay. So just, would you pay me $1,000? That's what you, I'm asking. You're going to pick the next picture. Oh, I'm picking the next picture. Okay. Um, Bill. Bill. We got to hear you, Bill. Bill. Hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, so my dream customer isn't, um, isn't uh, a consumer. It's, uh, there's two of them. There's government legislatures, tours, and government agencies. So my first one is to legislators. Will you pay me $25,000 to help you pass laws that lobbyists will approve? Okay, great, great one. Uh, let me rewrite this. Um, help you pass laws. That, that lobbyists will approve. Sounds pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to give you some feedback on it before we move on. Is that cool? Okay, sure. It's a good feedback for everyone. Remove the word help. Okay. And just say, would you pay me $1,000 to 
get you passing laws. What do I care more about? The help Bill's going to give me or just getting those laws passed? Care about, care about getting those laws passed. The help is part of the process. Okay. Now, obviously, you're going to help them, but I'm just saying, like, for the purpose of this being concise and powerful, we get right. rid of that word help. So, okay. 25 G's, get you passing laws, love it. That's freaking awesome. Okay. The second one is to, to regulators. <clears throat> so, after the laws pass, it goes to regulators. And they've got to write up the regulations. And a lot of times the lobbyists will fight them on the regulations, right? So the second part of it is it's to the government agency groups. Um, and this would be mostly federal, but I think state as well. Will you pay me $25,000 to, uh, to implement regulations that lobbyists will approve? So lobbyists fight at two levels. They fight at the right the law itself, and oh. secondly, they fight at implementing the regulations. So, question for you: which which category do these fit under? I think uh, I know. But I want your answer. I guess probably relationship. Um. It's also like they they want to st they want status right they want to be able to pass the things they want to do the way they want to do it with as much this as possible. increased status do are they going to make more money? They're going to get more power. They're going to have you more know, if power if they if have they're more able. Go. Yeah, I mean, it, so so yeah a lot of times you know the lobbyists are pretty shady right so it, it's very hard for legislators to work with them because they've got a lot of leverage over them um and and what i found is that uh you know a big part of it is because I, I used to work on the industry side writing policies that we would then tell the lobbyists to hey this is when when you have this issue either vote yes or vote no there's no like innovation or anything like that because you had to make it simple for the lobbyists to understand what what they had to do, right? Because mm -hmm. you had lobbyists all over the country. <clears throat> so, um, so, so there's no there's no one who can step in and write something up that um, can get them all to agree to something that works for both sides. And I've done I've done that before, um, and it's made a big impact, but it's just not happening now. Right. So um, and, and talk with people like who work at Deloitte, you know, they're getting like a million dollars to do this, a million dollars to like have a, you know, a series of workshops with government <laughs> to address yeah. an issue. So, so, so it's just it, it's insane. The money that's out there. Well, that's what I'm saying. So like when you, I know you said like relationships, but like with increased status, with increased power, wouldn't it? All good. Ultimately you come sure? down to, yes, sir. Well, wouldn't it ultimately come down to make more money? Well, I don't, you know, I don't, I mean, if it's a legislator or an agency, they're not, they're not going to make more, they're going to, it's not necessarily making money. It may be making money for their constituents, you know, like I want to pass this law to help this group of people, but I can't pass the law because the lobbyist is blocking it. So if they okay. pass this law, mm -hmm. it'll help people. And that's kind of my real reason for getting involved with it is helping the underprivileged to, yeah. um, you know, who, who would be helpful for a lot of these laws that are getting blocked. You're going to have your reasons, but I'm not interested in that right now. I want to know the reasons of why they're buying your program. Like if they do a really good job at increasing their stats and, and, and getting more power by getting these laws right. passed, aren't they ultimately, and I could be wrong, but aren't they ultimately going to get like a raise or move up in the field and then maybe get yeah i think so i think so so yeah i would think that um or they you know, they might get out they might go from a representative to a senator let's say right yeah. so it's going to give them prestige in order to move their career forward let's put it that way exactly. it may not be more money it, it's more it's a career enhancing thing when they when they enhance their career typically don't they get a raise um yeah i think so i mean in government if it's an agency yeah i think so i mean it, 
Okay. I guess if they move up, they're going to get more money. So that makes sense. Boom. There we go. So ultimately, and the reason why the reason I want to do this mental exercise with you to see where it goes is because like, ultimately you got to understand like these people, when they say, yes, I will give you 25 grand in the back of their head. They're thinking like, Oh, this is going to help me move up more. It can help me get that next. Uh, it can help me get that raise or get me help that promotion. Yeah. that That's a good point. That's a good point because I don't know what their I don't know what their particular issue is, but if there's something they can't get by the lobbyists, and if yeah. they, they do get it by the lobbyists, it's going to give them a promotion or whatever. Yeah. Then they see the money there, right? So it's a good point. It's so important for you to be crystal clear on that and understand that, Brian, because again, it only comes down to these four, and once you find the one, you can start speaking that language to them when you're in one-on-one -on -one conversations and even right. saying a little thing on a call on a call like. Even if you were to briefly mention like, hey, like, do you think this might help you get that promotion you're looking for? Like, yeah, right. you're right. You know, let's do it. Let's sign the check right now. Yeah. Like, because you, you, you went to his, these are, these are all human needs. Right. These are all human needs. Uh, relationship, beauty, make money. This like, you, you, you could, you could say something like make money equals actually equals freedom. It's a human need. Beauty would be like, uh, almost like acceptance. Uh, relationship could be like reproduction, right? And then mm -hmm. chronic pain relief is just survival, right? Mm -hmm. Like these are primitive human needs that you're tapping into. Like okay. If, if you put someone in severe pain, what do they want to do? They want to die. Right. If you take away some someone's all their money, what do they have? They have no freedom. They can't do anything. Uh, if you take away something, make someone super ugly, like they're probably going to get rejected by the, by the masses, you know? And so, if, so rec recognition and status doesn't play anywhere in these two or is it all like, is, sure. S status is, uh, it's kind of interwoven throughout these, like the more beautiful you are, your status goes up, the more, the more like, uh, the better relationship you have with like, let's say you start dating freaking Beyonce or something like, it was like, it was like oh, Bill's dating Beyonce, like his status must right. be. If okay, you're super I got rich, you. your status is high. Um, so these are like the the bottom layer, layer, and then if you if you achieve these, then you get status and recognition and yeah. all the other stuff. Okay, totally, for sure, for sure. Status is something that kind of goes without saying, but these things sometimes have to be said. Okay. Like all right, great, thanks. Someone, you never really say to someone like, "Hey, like Jeffrey, if you got a new sweater, do you think your status would go up?" You'd be like, uh, "It's kind of weird." But if I say, Jeffrey, like if you got a new sweater, don't you think your videos would pop a lot more and you may be able to get more views? But yeah. All right. So yeah, these are just fundamental, fundamental human needs, biological needs that you're tapping into. Okay, great. Thanks. I appreciate cool. it. Yeah, cheers. So you got a couple pitches there. Um, cool. All right. Thank you, Bill. And Belen for choosing Bill. We get a uh, Yelena to pick the next picture. Yes, um, I pick Kendra. Kendra, you are the chosen one. Hello. Hey. Okay, so <laughs> I'm. Just trying to pick the, I feel like I've been focused on the process so long. So since I sat in on your Zoom, uh, I think it was last week, I've been trying to focus. So I've been, I have a uh, goal setting framework. Mm -hmm. And I think for so long, I've been talking about, you know, I have this, you know, new way of setting goals. And this is why your smart goals don't work. Um, but someone called me the other day and the phrase that they used after we talked was, wow, every time I talk to you, I get such clarity on my career. And now I feel like I know which direction to go. And so I was like, well, maybe that's the goal. Cause I've been using this big, like, okay, your goal setting from a holistic point of view to have this better life. And, but maybe I need to hone in on like a, would you pay me a thousand dollars to get the kind of career clarity to get you into a career that's fulfilling and purpose-driven? Maybe that's too much. Yeah, you, too you're, you're very, you're very close. We have the raw materials here to turn this into something great, but okay. um, something along these lines, I would just cut right to the chase and be like, "Would you pay me a thousand dollars to land your dream career?" Okay. Like, 
like to land to, to land a high paying potentially high paying mm -hmm. would you say uh or your your would you pay me a thousand dollars to land your high paying dream career that sounds pretty good if i was into nine to fives or being employed i'd be like heck yeah because and and i'm wondering and i know people talk about niches the model it like it works for if you just want clarity on should i climb the nine to five ladder should i start that business because i've done it with entrepreneurs so it's niching down to high paying career gonna pigeonhole me or is it better than being too broad like oh this could work for everybody I recommend being as niche as makes sense to be. Okay. And then whoever doesn't necessarily fit that target that you're marketing to, they can always quote unquote, come through the back door. So great example. We used to only work with vegans. In fact, this course creator Academy was purely for vegans, but a bunch of non-vegans kept coming up to us and say, Hey, can you help me too? And we'd be like, sure. As long as you don't promote killing animals done so you might have this pitch and you're saying like i help for example students land their high paying dream career i could say hey well i'm not a student can you help me too like, yeah okay. absolutely okay that you makes want sense. To market to one niche so you can speak their language okay like there, if you go to like a, a blm uh parade or blm march you'll see some white people there too you know so it's like you'll get some outliers of the message. Yeah, you go to an like LGBTQ parade, you'll see some straight people there too. Mm -hmm. But they're marketing to who? LGBTQ. Yeah. Okay. Like, so that's what, that's what brings, that's what makes it so attractive to that main niche. It's like, wow, this is for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. So people want to feel like, wow, this is for me. Mm -hmm. And they're only going to feel like that if you straight up tell them, this is for you. Each. This is for, yeah, your label. So okay. which label would you want to use? Like, would it be for students or like? Um, or, or professional? I've been more professional. So I've been targeting high achievers who are still not fulfilled. So it's like they're at a place where maybe they're, friends and family are like, no, you should like, you should be happy with your career. Like you're doing better than all of us, but they're still not fulfilled. They're still not happy. And so coming in with like, okay, let's take a holistic view of actually where, what you want your life to look like. And then you can decide where you want to go professionally. Love it. Fantastic. Okay. This is great. Big fan. Now my, my homework assignment for you would be to, and you can report back to me on this. Send me a DM on school. Go and find at least one person who's mm -hmm. selling something like this. Okay. Okay. Cause I don't think I've done that. Yeah. We need to do that. Okay. And same for Bill, like Bill, go and find someone who's actually like doing something like this. Cause any, anytime you're doing something uncommon, like the biggest red flag is that like, you're the only one red flag to me is that you're the only one doing it. And I say it's a red flag because if nobody else is doing it, there's a chance, there's a big chance it doesn't work. But if you can find at least one person doing it or at least something very similar, then you can, then it's already proven like that. That person has proven it, it can be done. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think a lot of it now is, uh, like I said, uh, consultants are doing that now. I don't know if the jobs are being posted and they're responding, uh, but you know, they're writing, they're writing out of proposals you know, a couple of guys I know are doing it for, for Deloitte and, uh, yes. you know, it's, it's huge money and it's not even implementing it. It's just like, you know, the initial, uh, discovery phase. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's just because government, they just, it's just, what's, what's the process. If I, if I, you know, do the typical marketing to them, you know, pitching, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. funnel and lead mag and stuff like that, is that enough to get them to say, yeah, let's, let's talk about what you want to do. Or I know in the past in dealing with government, you know, there's a, just a, a huge process involved and, and they can't think unless they follow this process, which, sure. you know, has a lot of uh, obstacles in it and requires you to be 
probably certified or approved and things like that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I don't know. But I'm hoping that if if I can attract people with a with a really good story and um, the fact that you know all of them have this problem. Dude, I think, uh, or a I lot think of for them. you, for you, it's just get that first client. Once you get that first client, it's going to be all word of mouth. That's all you'll need. Yep. Okay, like, good. Bill did it for me. Boom. Yep. Like I've done a lot of things in business and life, not by researching who, but asking a friend who already had the result. Like, hey, how'd mm -hmm. you get that thing done? Oh, contact this person. I'm like, I would have never found that person on Facebook or Google or YouTube. It's like I had yeah. to get them through the grapevine. Right. So. Okay, we'll do that. Thanks. Just find one and then word of mouth. And then for the first person, because because that first person is so important, I'd charge them like nothing, dude. Charge them like see if you can charge them five grand just to get it in because they're going to be your marketing machine for the rest of your life. Right. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, cheers. Cool. Thank you, uh, Kendra. Thank you, Yelena, for choosing Kendra. Um, could I get Jeffrey to choose the next picture? You're muted, my friend. You're still muted, my friend. Uh, what about this one? We are good. Okay. Um, so choosing the next person, let me see, um, side-by-side -side gallery. Let's see. Has Matt gone yet? Mr. Savage has not gone. Okay. How about him? How about him? Yeah. Hey guys, how are you? Um, yeah, I'm actually working with Yelena and talked to Ted last week, a week ago. Uh, and I, I think we... We nailed what we were doing. I jumped on um, to listen in to gain more uh, insight, expertise, what's going on. But kind of what we landed on, um, and I'm still building out all my funnels, everything like that. So I haven't really jumped in. But I help people eliminate chronic pain, chronic fatigue, and excess body fat. So I'm still trying to wrap my brain around what that actually looks like. Um, I know in my mind kind of what I want to do, but does it translate to paper? Um, does it translate in a call? Um, and how does, you know, what does that look like? So this is how we translate so, it right here. Yeah. <laughs> so pitch. I'm pitching you guys. Yeah, right now. Okay. Um, let's go. Um, yeah, I help. Uh, uh, would you pay me? $1,000 to help you eliminate chronic fatigue, chronic pain, and excess body fat. Chronic fatigue. And what was the other one? Chronic pain? Chronic pain, yeah. Uh, cool. So, beautiful. I'll give you the same advice I gave Bill. Bill, what advice would you give Matt? Um. Focus on. Uh, There's one uh, word here, Bill. There's one word I want you to get rid of. Oh, get rid of help. There we go. See, Matt, when you get rid of the word help, it gets right to the point. So, would you pay me thousand dollars to? There we go. Hmm. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. If you add the word help in there, it just dilutes it. Now people think they're paying for some help, but they just want to pay for this. They could press a button, they wouldn't need you. If they, they had a choice between getting your help and pressing a button, dude, they'd press a button. Right? So you want to act like the button. Be the button. Yeah. Hashtag be the button. <laughs> so this is great. This is proven. If you go to one of our top most profitable clients of all time, what does she help people with? Again, you're saying chronic fatigue, chronic pain, excess body fat. Pain, masterpiece figure, which is lowering body fat. Uh, 
pain, weight loss. Yeah, she doesn't mention fatigue, but I'm sure sexual vitality is probably part of that. Yeah, cool. So proven, dude, for sure. Would you pay me $1,000 to eliminate chronic fatigue, chronic pain, excess body fat? Yeah, for sure. Cool. And, and cool. you know what's cool? You know what's cool about Alana too is she didn't have to quote unquote pigeonhole herself into just one. She was able to use like the bullet point list, right? So, yeah. Yeah, I think there's one there, you know, chronic pain, you know, um, I guess building out the course outline I have, you know, I, I, I feel like fatigue and body fat are easily kind of low hanging fruit. The pain part, you know, there's lots of different reasons for pain. For sure. So I think for, I think that's kind of like the, the one that's the, the outlier maybe. For sure. Um, this is very, and it's subjective too. Yeah. It's like, are you in pain or are you not in pain? It's like, it depends on my mood. Mm -hmm. right yeah yeah is it emotional is it physical yeah mental uh spiritual what is that yeah is it so. is it weather is it weather dependent like there's so many factors in chronic pain but you still can help people with that you know give them the best tools and resources you have to make that happen yeah 100 percent it's the same way with making money. It's like, it's like, why aren't you making money? Is it because you're distracted with your kids? Is it because your wife and you are on the brink, brink of breakup? Is it because your offer sucks? Is it because you don't know how to use a computer? Is it because you don't even, your English accent is way too strong or your Indian accent is way too strong. Your French accent is way too strong. Like so many factors why someone's not giving you money. It's like, so we need to dissect this and work with people across the board on why they're not making money. It's actually kind of similar to chronic pain. No. but we make it happen yeah thank you cool cheers hey you feel good about this i feel good about it yeah just we cool. gotta jump in and start doing it so beautiful well you get the green light stamp of approval do you have a uh a niche in mind by the way like do you want to help men or women or parents or I think who I relate to most are, um, you know, health conscious parents or parents that want to be health conscious. I feel like uh, I think if health... you want to be health conscious, that automatically makes you health conscious. Yeah. Because like <laughs> my mom growing up, I'd consider her health conscious, but she was like buying like free ranged eggs and whole wheat bread. And to me, that made her health conscious. Right. Cause she was like trying her best and buying like organic and all that. And now it's so that was so much easier to convert her to like raw veganism because she was already health conscious. Right. Cool. That's great. Beautiful, man. Look at that. Get the niche. We got the offer. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, quick question and answer break if anyone has any questions about what we've covered so far happy to answer otherwise we can continue when do you ask that question uh at the end of the phone call right you, before you more or less you, you know you, you never ask that word for word that is purely like shark tank style right like we're just pitching and like, if, if me in this, if you and I in this sanitized environment can get to an agreement, then that will translate over into real world acceptance of your offer as well. Albeit you'd have to customize the script a little bit and, you know, warm me up with some content first and show some testimonials perhaps, or, or at least tell me your own story. Tell me a bit more about your process and yeah. So yeah, to answer your question, you'd never ask that word for word, but the idea here in this workshop is to get me to at least say yes to it so that you can go and make that happen in real life. But in a, in a way, you know, you really are asking this question at the end of a phone call. It's like, it's like, cool. Well, how much is it? You're like, all right, Bill. Well, in order to 
um, get those regulations approved, it's just going to be because you're a uh, well, you probably wouldn't say it's because you're from, because you're my first client, but you're going to say something like, "Cool, Bill. Well, to get you those regulations approved, it's just going to be four nine nine seven. Boom. Any other questions, Yelena? No, thank you. You sure? Positive. All right, who should go next? JC hasn't gone. Did he go? JC? Or Jay? Jay? How do you say his last name, Elena? Uh, Cartegna or Cartegna? I don't know. Cartena. Oh, okay. My yeah, my initials are JC. Is that what you guys were? Were you guys yeah. referring to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. John Cart Cartegna. Yes, thank you. So oh, yeah. you're up. You're up to bat. Yeah, thank you, brother. Um, Ted, would you pay me a thousand dollars to train your brain to make you wealthy without working harder? Okay, we're close. We got some good raw materials there. Okay. So, pop quiz, which category does this fall under? Money. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. So, right away, we have a winner in that sense. However, I don't want to pay you a thousand dollars to train. I want to pay you a thousand dollars to make me wealthy without working harder. You can train my brain with me. I just don't want to pay you for it. Because we haven't started working together yet. And I'm not sold yet on the idea of training my brain. However, I am sold on this. So once you sell me on this, the next step is to sell me on training my brain, which will be a very easy sell because I've already agreed to this. I think a lot. Do you still have the Google Doc up there? Yeah. Can you see the screen? No, my phone, my computer phone rang right as we started chatting. and I. Uh... Oh, let me uh, share it again. I just shared it again. Yeah, there you go. Tim. Okay, that makes sense. That's a good point to make you wealthy without working harder. Yeah, yeah, I mean, people are opting in for this freebie. So, I mean, it's there's really no reason to delay anymore. Um, and this will just improve it. The only question I had around this is, um, you know, what's that quote? The more attractive and desirable the end result, the I think the easier it will be to sell, I think is the quote. Yeah. So is this optimized in that regard? I'm trying to think, how do we um, improve that? Yeah, we'll good question. Well, one way to improve it, well, if we break down that word or that acronym, Hitaker, who knows what this means? Desirable, quantified, and result. Yes, the Q is what we're missing here. Yeah. So all we got to do is add a Q on here to make it even more attractive. So like in 90 days or less, perhaps? Well, the end result, you're talking process now. End result would be wealthy, correct? But that's not quantified. Easily quantifiable, but not quantified in this example. So how do we quantify that? Uh, give it a dollar figure per month or something. Yeah. thousand dollars to make you sounds like you're offered 10 grand a month online or 10 grand a month um, make you an extra ten thousand dollars a month cool easy sell bro that's an easy sell someone came on yesterday 
because uh, I was doing this offer clarity workshop yesterday as well. And they had a very similar offer, but it was like, um, would you pay me a thousand dollars to make your first thousand dollars in 10 days online? And I was like, uh, genuinely curious how he's going to help people do that. Cause that's a pretty realistic offer. Right. And he does it through something called arbitrage sports betting, where you like bet on both teams, no matter what you win. So he's showing people how, like, if they do the sports betting using his method, they could easily make a thousand bucks every five or so hours using arbitrage sports betting. And turns out it's like a real thing and it's legal in certain states. So I thought that was pretty cool. But, but, yeah, but for, it, yours, for yours, it's not sports betting, it's training the brain. So I'm curious the process you would use to make this happen. Uh, meditation, visualization, um, possible trauma release, uh, things like that. Love it. Cool. Proven, dude. Yeah, totally. So my um my freebie that you know folks are opting into is basically what I said in the beginning. Um, not to split hairs or really get too granular, but it almost kind of makes sense to rephrase that too to what we're looking at right here. Yeah, I mean it's you're always gonna be optimizing, polishing, rephrasing things, making it better and better and better and better. So if this makes more sense, then yeah, rephrase it. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Ted. Cool. Cheers. Um, do you have a niche in mind? Yeah, men who are um self developing and who want to become better, basically. What are your thoughts on that? As a niche, as stated, I don't know the word you want to use, but uh, men works. Men works. You can be more specific later, but I think that's good enough for now. Yeah. Cool. You're, wanna, head, you're by I the way, dude, in. just sorry, Lena. Your head, your uh, speakers, John, are no damn good. They keep cutting out like every 10 seconds. Yeah, my bad. Uh, my apologies. It's probably the AirPods here. Yeah. It's either the battery is low or some connection is not good. Yeah, thanks for We're sticking in there, Ted. And yeah, but the, the, I, I want to give you that feedback because you might not yeah. make sales with those headphones. So you might think it's your uh, offer, but it's yeah. your actually it's your headphones. Okay, yeah, got it. Thank you. Yeah, cheers. Yulian, what were you gonna say? <clears throat> um, I was gonna say, what do you think about maybe being a little bit more specific on what you mean with working harder <clears throat> and targeting a pain point, right? Because, like, let's say for weight loss, nobody wants to count calories. Mm -hmm. So people you say without counting calories or without totally, whatever. you definitely be more specific here. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. You could say, um, hours. Yeah. You, you, you could even say like, um, actually $10,000 a month without, without adding any extra, is that what you said? Adding any, any extra hours? Yeah. That was my first thought. Not working more hours. Something like that. It's definitely more specific for sure. Good point, Lena. Yeah. Something yeah, like that. Point. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Or like without working overtime. Well, yeah. People like me, I don't work overtime because I don't have any time. It's just uh, time I wake up, time I go to bed. I have no sense of time. But Overtime is more for like nine to five employees, I think. Clock in, clock out. So, or salary based jobs, whatever. But he might be working with, John might be working with uh, kids in their high school years or college students or unemployed people. Cool. Yeah, and that would change it, of course. Yep. Okay. All right.
Jeffrey, you ready to pitch? Yeah, sorry, I got stuff going on all elsewhere. Um, yeah, I've tried to work it, as you know, we've kind of changed. It was a big change. So where I'm at is, would you pay me a thousand dollars to earn your first thousand dollar month to transform your online status and gain high ticker high ticket clients? Okay, okay, back up, back up. Would you pay thousand dollars to earn your first thousand dollars a month? Yeah, first thousand dollar month. Yeah, I mean it's working, so I was kind of mishmashing it. So maybe it's a little messy. Um, first thousand dollar month to transform your online status and gain higher ticket clients. Okay. We we could put a period here and it would be good. Okay. I mean a question mark. Sorry, we got to be gra mm -hmm. grammatically correct. Would you pay me thousand dollars during your first thousand dollar month? Mm -hmm. You could put like, you could add the process because it is a little vague. You could say like, um, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Right. Boom. Now it's like instantly so much more attractive because I know what the heck you're talking about. But um, it's not necessary, but I do like it because your thing is so simple, bro. It's like, here's how to make really good YouTube videos that get clicks, views, and customers. Mm -hmm. That's like a beautiful little package there. I, you could even say like, as a YouTube creator, If you want to go right. to the identity route. Yeah. Well, like you were suggesting that I aim for coaches. Right. Well, okay. Then you, then that's the niche coaches. Would you pay me a thousand dollars for your first thousand dollars a month on YouTube? Yeah. Or it could be something like, um, $3,000 to land, to land your first high ticket client. That's pretty cool. To land your first. From, would it be from YouTube? Sure. Yeah. The thing is, I don't, I might not know what a high ticket client is. So I'm trying uh, to think, could, could we put a number in there? Would, to land your first. Uh, $3,000 client. That's yeah. It's, it's just risky now because someone's going to think I can't, no one's going to pay me three grand. Because a big ask for a beginner, right? Because we're saying you're first. Yeah. My, my first high ticket clients, dude, were all paying me like a thousand bucks a pop. And to me, I was like, yeah. wow, people actually paying me a thousand bucks. This is crazy. I did not believe 3000 was possible. Yeah. Uh, would you pay a thousand dollars to land your first? Yeah. A thousand dollar client. What do we say? Just your first, your first, your first paying client from YouTube. Oh Yeah. That's I mean, that's really good. good. I love it. Mm, yeah. There we go. And you can tell them what I tell them, which is like, dude, your first client, you should undercharge just to get some experience. And your next client, you can bump the rate up a bit. Yeah. So maybe their first client is just 500 bucks, but the next one is a thousand. And the one after that's 1500. Yeah. This is great, man. Yeah, I like that. Guys, type in the chat the number one if you would pay for this, if you were brand new. Hey, dude, you got some potential sales coming in, dude. Hmm. Yeah, now, dude, think about this. If you were to pitch this in front of all the content printers inside the school community, yeah, I'd say at least half of them would say yeah. Exactly. Matt, Matt wants to be a beta. See, people are going to be lining up like, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Like, that's how good of an offer this is, bro. Whereas what you had before, it might have sounded good to you or it felt good to you, but like it just didn't resonate with the market. This resonates with the market and hopefully we can still make it resonate with you based on what you're providing inside the program. Yeah. Can I ask you a follow-up question on this? Because you know my story. Uh, 
how do you recommend I treat my current audience to shift to this new tweak? Because it's pretty extreme difference. Well, it's a good question. So first, I want to say that inside this program, you're still going to be helping men with if, if you do just help men, maybe you only help men, that could be a thing. Like, I don't know. But if you do want to just because in your audience, just men. Yeah, it's the, the school of masculinity right now. Yeah. So this could still be for men it could be like, male coaches you probably wouldn't use that word but right um, people would get the idea probably that you work with men yeah mm -hmm. so the way the inside this program you're still going to be helping men with almost everything you help them with now which is like whatever you think is helpful whether it's tech whether it's with aesthetics whether it's with editing whether it's with having that light in your back corner turned on or off depending on the time of the day mm -hmm. Um, you know, you're still gonna help them with everything you want to help them with. So having said that your content doesn't even necessarily need to change that much. However, the way you thread in the call to action, you could find various ways of associating it with your content. So for example, I'll give you an example of what I did one time. Because again, I, as you know, I help coaches, right? Yep. But I was making a video on YouTube about how to succeed on a vegan diet. So how would I associate helping coaches with succeeding on a vegan diet? Uh, you mean in their life? In the YouTube video. Because at the end, I want to make a pitch to say, hey, if you're a coach, blah, blah, blah. Oh, so, so the, let me get this straight. The coach that I'm, I'm guiding is a vegan coach. Well, in this example, I'm giving you now, I recently, I made a video a few months ago saying, here's mm -hmm. how to succeed on a vegan diet. Okay. And my pitch at the end was like, Hey, if you're a coach, click the link in the description to learn how to make 10 K month. Oh, how do you think I mean, that, I, how do you think I bridged that to make it not weird? Hmm. Um, uh, I guess you would be talking about how you teach, uh, like something with veganism. But I don't really, uh, I'm just trying to think of like what you yeah. said. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, sure. Well, I'll just give you the answer. Cause it's a hard thing, a hard answer to come up with. Yeah. What I did is the intro of the video. I was like something along the lines of like, Hey guys, Ted Carr here. And as you know, I help coaches get their clients really, really good results. And a lot of my coaches are vegan coaches who are helping their clients get results on a vegan diet. So I'm going to make this video to show you how to succeed on a vegan diet. So that way your clients can also succeed. Right. Then the call to action made sense. Like, by the way, if you are that coach and you do want to make an extra 10 K a month, link in the description. So I was just giving okay. advice to coaches on how to help their clients succeed on a vegan diet. Can so, you repeat what you, can you, or can you, wait, is it a recent video? Um, somewhat. It was, it was very subtle and soft the way I did it, but it was essentially like, Hey, I help vegan coaches help their clients get results. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to succeed on a vegan diet. So that way your clients can get results. Yeah. Which one? I think it was fruitarian fundamentals or mm -hmm. back on hundred percent raw. One of those two. Okay. But yeah, it was like a freaking year ago. Wow. Felt recent. Okay. So, so you have Ted Carr health and fitness and you're talking about coaching and stuff. What do you think about like namings and stuff like that? Is that beyond the scope of this Zoom call today or? Um, well, it's all part of the package, you know? Yeah. But, but that, that's what I was mentioning. Go, I was telling you yesterday, go through the 31 Ps. And one of those is yeah. the program name. Yeah, I started working on that today. So in terms of a name, dude, that's like one of the hardest things to brainstorm. ChatGPT is your best friend. What yeah. I recommend is you give ChatGPT three or four names that you like from other coaches that you've seen or maybe mm -hmm. previous names that you've used and be like, Hey, I want a name like this, but for this program. And I want it two to three words max. 
and it'll spit out amazing examples that you can use way faster than you and I can think of them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, chat GPT, give it examples, tell it what you want. But, but okay. to answer your cool. question of like, how do you offer this to your current people? You're just going to find ways to naturally thread it into the content. And every now and then you're going to release a video of like, here's how I've optimized my office for getting clients on YouTube. Or here's how I recommend increasing um, your net worth by making simple YouTube videos. Or here's yeah. how I recommend, fo you know, uh, following your your uh, your purpose as a man it's by doing what you're put here on earth to do. And a lot of you guys are put here on earth to help other men. So what's required is you having a channel and a platform and a coaching offer, really simple coaching offer where you just help men go from A to Z. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. Yeah, I just totally understand that. Tie it in, tie it in, tie it in. Got it. Um, when you're coaching people and you recommend something like that, and I understand I'm going to try that, uh, you, I hear a lot of people say, yeah, but, and then they have a, some kind of excuse or some reason. I hear it all the time. I've even done it myself. What is your reaction to that? Because I'm assuming through all the years of coaching you've been doing, something comes up for you when you hear somebody, yeah, but, and then have an excuse. What, what would you say is that that hurdle that people always face when they're going, yeah, but that you're like, no, and you want to shake them and be like, don't worry about that. Like, you know what I'm asking here? Yeah, it definitely depends on your relationship with that client. Yeah. Like if your mom says, yeah, but you're like, come on, mom, like, don't be, you know, or if it's your dad, you're like, what are you doing? Or it's your brother, you're like, dude, don't be an idiot. Like, it yeah. depends on the person who says it, right? If it's a new client or a new work client and they say, yeah, but I take that as like really good data of, objections people have to actions that I'm asking them to take. And dude, like 10 times out of 10, hundred percent of the time, I can understand where they're coming from. I would also say, yeah, but if I was in their situation, it's not like um, their points are totally invalid. I'm like, I could see why they're having that objection. And, and now I need to find a way to overcome that objection. It's just sales, right? Because you're asking them to do something, they have an objection. How do you overcome that objection? So the best way to respond to a yeah, but is, hey, man, totally understand. And then you repeat back what they just said. Dude, totally understand. You don't have any followers right now. It might be hard for you to actually get some clients initially. That's why inside this program, the very first thing we're going to do is help you grow that audience. So it's, I just hear it as really good feedback of how to overcome these objections. And then I can try to overcome those objections with content so that way in yeah. the future people don't have that same objection because i've already overcome it with that content yeah yeah that's really good yeah you want the content to overcome most of the objections ideally hmm. awesome All that's right. why like if i want if i'm on a sales call and somebody doesn't buy the best thing i can do is get off that sales call and make a video right then and there about the objection that they had and, and kind of like break it down and, and give them like a, give people like a, the thought that I want them to think instead. But same with coaching clients. Yeah. That's actually really brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. But it's easy. It's easy. I had, I had a client yesterday who gave me like five of those dude in a row. And I was like, going to facepalm myself at one point like geez this woman's just purely full of objections but i was like wow no these are like she's speaking on behalf of everybody else who also has these objections and if i can't get her to overcome these objections i'm not i'm going to be missing out on thousands of other clients who also have these objections so it's almost like you're interviewing someone on the street you're like what do you think of this and they give you their feedback and like wow it's completely off but okay Right. It's just good feedback. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. It, it's a really good idea to turn the objections into content. It's yeah. Great. For sure. Cool. Turn the objections into content. You could even do, a, we recommend this to a lot of our clients. Did you come up with a list of the top 10 objections you get most frequently? And there's 10 videos right there. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's I wrote that down. That's great. That's really good advice for like everyone in case you're wondering what to make YouTube videos about. Like those videos do really well because they serve double duty. They serve as like being a really helpful video for people, but they also serve as helping you create your ideal clients. Because if Jeffrey's trying to help people, you know, make money on YouTube, but one of their objections is I'm not good on camera. Jeffrey can come with a video that says, hey, I understand you think you might not be good on camera. Here are three ways to make money anyway on YouTube, even if you're not good on camera. Number one, the faceless video. Number two, the interview. Number three, blah, blah, blah. Right now, you just gave them like three ways of making money on YouTube, even if they don't want to show their face. So now they can't have that objection anymore. They can never say to Jeffrey, I don't want to show my face on camera because they just watched the video on how to make money anyway. Boom. Yeah. It's going to be good topics for live too. Something I like to do is I'll go live. I'll talk about something just to kind of like flesh out my ideas live because it's very informal. And then once I've gone live, I will then jot down some, some of my favorite points and then I'll turn that into the YouTube video or, or a written post or something more structured, formal. So if you want to brainstorm some ideas, just go live and talk about it. Cool. Well, does anyone else have any pitches for me? I can do pitch. Casper. Okay, so I would do like a pitch that would be for for health, uh, like for being beauty and for relationship. It's like a guy who wants to be more attractive and it also will help him get more like get him into a relationship. Okay, so let's get rid of, I would just pick one for the pitch. So probably, more you, yes. I'd probably say something like, uh, for example, lack of a better word, like land your, would, do you want him to get dates or like get a girlfriend? Uh, like specifically be more attractive. Yeah, but for and what? For, yeah, like but it's a, it would be rather for beauty, beauty. So you don't want to talk about relationships? No, it, the main thing is beauty. Okay, why like, does he, why does those. he want to, why does he want to be more beautiful? Like looking good and being more attractive, he, he will look, just feel much better with himself, with the better, with more attractiveness. Okay, which kind of guys are you wanting to target here? Guys that are um, want to put a work in his body. The ambitious guy, the disciplined guy. Okay. Hey, I, I just wrote a, like, uh, a page. Can I just write, uh, read it for you? Sure. Well, think about it. Being attractive is by large looking healthy. There are like mathematical features and genetics by, and but however by and by and largely, it's a lot of in a, in a lot of ways. If like it's having a clear skin, looking fit, masculine, being in a good shape taking care of your hygiene and it's like having good style wearing classic classy so those are signals are not only for women but also for men like when they are choosing a partner to do business with or someone they want to be around they should uh, they would say the person has their life together so I have an offer for you. I would help you to get more attractive with those things. Being more healthy will, and like taking care of your life. So it will make you more attractive. Would you pay me like 997 for, for the service? 
See, this is, I, I hear what you just said, but in my mind, I'm thinking I would only pay for that service because I think it would make me more attractive to a potential mate. Like if I already had a girlfriend or a wife, I'm probably not going to sign up for that program. Just me personally. I don't know. I might be the only guy thinking that, but as a potential prospect, I'm telling you right now, I would more likely pay you a thousand dollars if you could help me um, get a girlfriend by becoming more attractive. Okay. Like I, I, because what's what's the what's the purpose of me being more attractive? Like. If you, all you have to do is tell me the purpose of you being more attractive is so you can uh, date hot women. They're like, cool. Let's do it. But if I'm just attractive for attractive sake, that's it feels really weird. I mean, maybe some guys are into that. But I don't know. I'm, I'm curious what Jeffrey has to say about this because Jeffrey was kind of in that niche recently, or it still is. Um, I kind of zoned out. I'm I'm multitasking today. Okay. I apologize question, for that. Question for you. Yeah. Casper is wondering, he's asking me, would you pay me $1,000 to become more attractive? And I was saying how I would if he said something like, would you pay me $1,000 to date hot women by becoming more attractive? But I was yeah. saying, I don't I... want to be attractive just to be attractive. I want to be attractive so that I can have a girlfriend or a wife. Yeah, immediately attraction to me has to do with relationships. So I work on this a lot and I would try to avoid relationships because I didn't want to be a dating coach and all that. Uh, but it is one of the answers or it was a matter of um, gaining some sort of power. So uh, owning a room, presenting with power, things like that. So it then then became money. Um, and I think it, I, I landed in this idea of what does being better looking do for you, which you were mentioning, I heard that, uh, and trying really, really hard to pick something, even if you know, it's not the whole story. Yeah. That's what I've learned through this whole thing. And it's a really, really tough one. It is not an easy one because, um, the wording is really tough. If somebody's married, they don't care, but that's kind of how that's, it's a really tough niche. Yeah, thank you. So, mm -hmm. Casper, you're hearing it from a guy who's already been in this niche for like several years. Um, just straight up saying, would you pay me $1,000 to become more attractive? For women, I could see that being the case. A lot of women would probably be like, yes, sign me up. But for men, it's a different kind of sell. Like we need, we need want like some form of purpose for it. We don't want to just be beautiful just to be beautiful. That's pretty feminine, I would say. Um, unless you want to help like, you know, feminine guys. One guy and uh, Andrew, one guy out there successful doing this is saying um, basically he helps men un unlock their dream dating life quickly. That's um, 100% sold. Like, and again, Casper, you don't even need to mention girls or dating inside the program. You just need to mention how to become more attractive. And the dating will take care of itself because they'll be so attractive. What do you mean by that? How, how would they? Like, for example, if you said, Ted, would you pay me $1,000 to unlock your dream dating life quickly? And I pay you a thousand bucks for that. Inside the program, once we start working together, I don't even need you to mention this. You could mention okay, it maybe yeah. once. You could mention it once and say, hey, dude, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you become more attractive so that you can unlock your dream dating life quickly. So let's get into it. Here are the top 10 things I need you to do this week to become more attractive. Boom, 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 boom. Now we're focused purely on the process as we work together. This end result is going to be byproduct. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not giving you a thousand bucks out of my pocket just to be more attractive. I'm going to give you a thousand bucks so that I can make this happen. And if being more attractive is going to make that happen, let's do it. 
Yeah, but like, mm, I mean, I agree with it totally, but, but I also think that um, even men uh, which are already in a relationship also um, want to improve their appearance. I'm in a, I'll tell you right now, just some personal experience. I'm in a relationship and my girlfriend's asked me a couple times. She's like, Ted, like what kind of fashion style do you like? And I'm like, I'm looking down at my clothes. I'm like, what I'm wearing now? Like, I don't give a shit. I've, we're, we're already dating. Why would I try to like dress up? Like I've, I've, I've already landed my dream girl. Why do I need to dress up? I'm good. Even for her. I do other things for her. I don't want to change my style. If Maybe the, not change, uh, like change the style, but like improve it or improve your um, but I've already but, 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 I've, but I've already gotten the thing that I would that I've already gotten the end result. No, it'd be okay, different. But, it'd be different. But, it'd be different if you said, I'll help you make more money from stage by selling your program by looking better. For sure. So I, I pay you a thousand bucks right now if you can help dress me up on stage so I can sell my program, make way more money. For sure. But I've already gotten the girlfriend. If I didn't have a okay. girlfriend I was single, then I would do it. What about it would be the same situation as now, but you would be very unhealthy and your uh, your skin would like you would you have skin like ten years ago if with the acne. If I had acne, you mean? Yeah, you have acne as you know, you are you were in as a teenager, but sure. you have the same girlfriend now. Yeah, that then yeah, then that could be another one, like lose acne. Um lose weight, even just gain muscle. I would pay you for any of these, bro. But the gaining muscles wouldn't be to get a girlfriend. Losing weight wouldn't be to get a girlfriend. This wouldn't be to get a girlfriend. It would just be like, I mean, maybe if I was single, it would be. But not, even if I'm already in a relationship, I would want these things still. So it's just how I will mm, name the uh, name the, the, court, the, the thing. Yeah, yeah. The, the beat. How I just pitch it. Being more attractive, I wouldn't pay a thousand bucks for. Having more muscle, I would. I'd also pay a thousand bucks to lose weight and get super lean. I'd also pay a thousand bucks to get rid of my acne. Yeah. So it, it's just like, how do you pitch it? Yeah. But I like what Jeffrey said too, like presenting with power. That's a really interesting one. Like I, I was uh, at Funnel Hacking Live one time and I saw Russell Brunson speaking and Russell Brunson was like all dressed up, all fancy. And he's like, by the way, in case you guys like like the way I dress, uh, I paid like 50 grand to that fashion designer over there to help me design the next like 20 outfits that I wear. Well, like, you think I paid 50 grand to like learn how to wear clothes? So it's purely to present with power. Russell Brunson already got five kids and a wife. You know, he doesn't care about impressing his wife. He wants to sell more stuff. So um, you, you think what's the purpose of being more attractive? I want to add to that because I just used that in a story. I did a poll yesterday about this is kind of similar to what I'm doing with. I am teaching people how to look better on camera, uh, have their brand look better. Generally speaking, be more attractive to a client or a person. But I didn't ask my audience, how, do you want to be better looking? I asked them, do you, would you be interested if I presented with prestige or how I present with prestige? And I had like a picture of the Zoom call and Ted, actually, there's a little picture of you in it. And uh, and it like kind of show that. So I could have said present with power. I probably like that wording better. But the the poll was like 70 percent of people said yes. Um, but I know in the past when I was like, hey, would you like if I taught you how to be more attractive? They just didn't even choose the poll, let alone vote like oh, yes or no. Look at that. That's huge. Thank you for sharing that. It's case in point proven. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. There you go, Casper. You heard it from the man himself. He's already been down the road. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, cheers. This, this, That's the kind of like info you're not going to get anywhere else. Like you've got to be on these calls if you want that sort of info. This is so niche specific. Like... And guys, I've been a part of other coaching programs in the past, by the way, like a lot. 
And they don't put as much emphasis as we put on the offer. Like a lot of other coaches, they'll be like, yeah, you could sell that. Yeah, you could sell that. And they're like, oh, it's not selling? Hmm, maybe you need to like increase like your amount of like ad spend. I'm like, dude, the offer sucks. What are you doing? So we're trying to dial in your offer first so that everything else flows a lot easier. And if you come at it with this word, even if your offer is good, the messaging sucks, it's not going to work. So that's why we're so, uh, we're such sticklers on not letting you move forward until this is perfect. But but I promise you, if you were to take this offer, Casper, that you just told us, thousand dollars to become more attractive, and you were to go try and like work with another coach to make it happen, they would try and make you. They would try and help make that happen for you, and you'd just be going in circles. Nothing would work because the messaging isn't powerful enough. So is this target audience like? <clears throat> unattractive people i was what about saying like up op by optimizing your physique instead of becoming more attractive like well this is this is where this is where it is for casper right now we don't know what word he wants to use here he needs to say something it could be by building your dream physique it could be by you know um what was the other option we said uh, by losing weight it's like one of these three the act, acting one's a, a bit of a tougher one. These two are definitely the most easy. But but the, the other thing, Yelena, too, is like people don't wake up in the morning and think, I want to optimize my physique, right? <laughs> they think like I need to tone up. I need to get rid of this excess body fat. I need to get lean AF, right? Very few people have the wording of optimize my physique. Well, yeah, nobody says become more attractive either. Exactly. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay for this. No, but would you pay a thousand bucks to have your dream body? Yeah, for sure. Um, sold. Would you pay a thousand dollars to land your, or not land, um, uh, date or be, marry your soulmate by becoming sexier? <laughs> Maybe. Would you pay $1,000 to marry your soulmate by becoming sexier in a bathing suit? For uh, Me for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's, it's again, it's tapping in. You were just speaking words that like hit on human biological needs. It'll sell every time if you do that. Um, Guys, I've got to run. My alarm's going to go in one minute. But if you want to stay on, uh, I can make somebody a host and y'all can brainstorm together if you want. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I can close this down. I got to go. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you Peace very time. much. Have a good day. Okay. Everyone's running. Peace out. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for joining. Cheers. Bye.